Exactly how weird am I? Now this is gonna be a sort of self-referential YouTube video because I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years. In fact, just yesterday that I'm a very interesting person, very interesting to talk to and highly unusual. I guess I'm not normal, guys. I guess I'm not normal. So when enough people tell you that, <laughs> I look okay. I look like a human more or less, I think. Um, but somehow the way that I talk to people, the way that I engage with people, they call it disarming. They call it um, intense. They call it, it's like very exposing, I suppose, in some way, um, but also very unusual and weird and just different. Like I'm not like other people is what they say. What does that, what does that mean? Does that mean that they just haven't been exposed to a lot of things and need to get out more? I don't think so, because these are people who've been around the world, um, who've seen a lot of different people. So I'm getting this feedback of strangeness or interestingness or uniqueness of this person right here. And I'm kind of like, well, okay. Uh, I mean, I feel like, I guess, maybe. I mean, we're all unique, but um, what does it mean? What does that even mean? Um, I mean, I guess I've met a few people in my life where I've thought, oh, they're very interesting or very different or something about them is just markedly different from most people that I know. Maybe I'm just one of those people. I don't know. But that's that. I mean, I've got, I've got the forehead, I've got the hair, I've got the eyebrows, the eyeballs, <laughs> the nose, the mouth, the ears, the facial hair, the neck, all of it. That's just the external form. So maybe there's something else happening. Maybe there's something... It's the way that I'm communicating or there's who knows how things get translated through my fucked up brain that comes out in a weird like, I don't know. Um, ah, what can I say? I mean, I'll eat some food. If you want to watch me eat some food, I mean, some kale, some rice, some tofu, um, tofu, which is like a, a protein. So that's good for you. You can see, watch this. <laughs> My, what are those called? That muscle right there. Let's Google that. Do you, mind, do you guys mind if I Google that real quick? Um, that muscle is called the, okay, this is a very small photo. Ah, the temporalis. This is the temporalis. So my temporalis is going wild. It's going buck wild. And I was just thinking about, speaking of bucks, I was thinking about tofu and I was flipping the tofu on the stove and I was like flipping the tofu like a soy boy, doobity boo. And then thinking about not eating meat. So this whole story that I'm getting to, which I, I'm... Blah, 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 um, okay, alpha gal. I'm an alpha gal, right? Alpha gal. Woo <laughs> and what that means is I was bitten by a lone star tick. Look it up. It's on Wikipedia. When you get bitten by a lone star tick and you get alpha gal syndrome, you cannot eat red meat. You can't have, typically you can't even really have any mammal products whatsoever, which I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with that. Some people get bitten by that tick and they are devastated. Like their lives are wrecked because they cannot eat red meat. I'm okay with it. I've gone on and off over the years and it's fine. Um, if I were going to eat, what, what was I saying? Because of bucks and deer. If I were going to eat red meat, I'd shoot it and kill it myself. You know what I'm saying? Skin it. Um, I'm not going to go to the grocery store and buy a package of red meat. That's weird. I mean, it's fine. We all do it, but it's weird. The whole, th the whole system is weird. The whole fucking life is weird, right? So I'm an alpha gal soy boy. Um, and I am eating a little bit of tofu. I haven't had tofu in years. I'm eating a little bit of that tofu. Um, cause we have a text coming in. I'm eating a little bit of that tofu because I just need to keep my protein levels high enough without red meat. Ugh, and I've kind of gone off. I got so sick of dealing with raw chicken. It's just kind of just, it's kind of disgusting if you really get down to it. It's fucking gross. Right. Um, so I've got fish, I'm eating fish, um, and whatever plant-based proteins, etc. And, and tofu, tofu has a ton of protein. Not sure how great it is for me. Not, it's, it's an experiment. We'll see. Um, so that's that. We got tofu. We got kale, which is great. Everyone loves kale. Um, carrots. There's some celery in here, some rice, and some soy sauce. It's like a little stir-fry dish. And um, I 
You know what's interesting? It's like... <sighs> I feel like there should be a deep thought coming and it's just not coming. I'm just staring. I'm just staring at empty space right now, guys. <laughs> Can I just eat my food in peace, please? Just watch me eat my damn food, all right? <laughs> this is now an ASMR channel. I mean, that's... For me, personally, I do not enjoy the sound of people eating and chewing. Uh, it's not like, I don't have a phobia against it, but it's not something that I'm going to tune into. Um, so you can do what you want with this. I'm just going to eat another bite of food and you can just come along for the ride. so nice to share a meal with someone, isn't it? Now, if you're eating, then great, we can eat together. Um, it's a whole different story than just watching someone eat or being watched while you're eating. Eating is so great as a social activity because the whole experience just, it's so seamless. It just goes by. You're having a good time. The food is being digested. There's conversation. And yeah, if it's a good, I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking <laughs> most people probably grew up with like a childhood environment of like sit down at the table and eat your damn food and you know it's like being forced um that's not as fun it's not <laughs> oh okay i guess is this what we're doing okay yes sure fine um but having a good conversation with friends laughs are flowing and it's like okay yeah that helps that makes it better it makes life a little more bearable so today you guys are my friends um i do have like a milestone in my life that I'm not going to talk about that. That's too positive. Let's keep this keep this a little bit more neutral for this video. We don't want to go off the deep end here into joy. Uh, sometimes it's nice, actually. I mean, it's good to share joy. It's also good to kind of hold it in and let it simmer and let it grow and kind of get acquainted with that. If you're anything like me, which you're probably not because I'm a weirdo, but you push down and push away all positive experiences, um, never letting them surface so that you're not aware of it. Oh, was that happiness? Oh, okay, get rid of it. <laughs> and the thing is, is, is it's not just joy, it's actually all emotion. So it's like, oh, that's an emotion. Okay, let us get rid of that and sort of just push it down. And for me personally, this is a wackadoodle, holistic, health theory that just came out of my butt 20 years ago, which is that this motion of pushing down, which you could call anxiety, this motion of pushing down, if you were to imagine physically doing this and holding your arms like this and using force all day, every day for years, you could imagine how that might start to influence the physical condition of your health and vitality. And I'm not going to say that suppressing emotions causes illness and disease, but I'm also saying that it does because it's true. Uh, it's not easy to solve, but it is, I think, probably a known fact at this point. And even back when I was thinking about this in my 20s, I think it was, uh, it was probably a known fact then too. I don't know. I didn't look it up at the time. How would you look that up at the time? Google. Yeah. Um, so let's just eat a piece of weird celery. Celery is a weird vegetable, right? I don't know. It's got a certain taste to it, you know? Um, I was talking with someone the other day about like the fennel um, licorice taste or smell and like, is there a gene for that? Do some people enjoy that and some don't? Because I don't particularly enjoy it. Black licorice, fennel anise um is there a gene for that like there is for cilantro if there is someone let me know i'm not like i have i wish i had a lot of people watching this that could just immediately do the feed because i could google it again and i wonder how high or low what's the elevation let's get the stats guys just hang on a sec here we're gonna check there's a plane flying outside we want to know how low was the plane? Because it, it, it was loud. Oh, interesting. It was a Lockheed C-130H Hercules, which I'll put that up on the screen there. 
Um, that's probably why it sounded so loud. It was flying at 1,900 feet, which is not that low. Um, but that's a big boy. That's a big boy plane. So, you know, I think I talked for 10 minutes. Is that good enough? <laughs> good enough for what? For YouTube? For the algorithm? For the viewers? For myself? For my sanity? I don't know, man. I am just going to finish eating in peace, though. And you guys can just... I'm not going to say F off. Like, that's... I don't... Not that I think that's rude. It's just I don't know if YouTube will... I'm such a wuss that I actually do kind of want people to watch my videos, even though in the beginning I didn't. And I'm worried that swearing will kind of get me a little slap on the wrist from the YouTube censorship bureau. If I tell the audience to F off, like, it doesn't have the same ring to it if you just say the word F, F off. Uh, you, you gotta say it. I mean, kids are saying it. Two, three, four-year-olds are saying it. Why can't I say it on YouTube? You know what I mean, guys? We just gotta be free. We gotta be free. Um, let those Fs fly, so. All right, well, it's a conundrum, isn't it? See you next time.